Hello everyone. Welcome to the Amanda Moss Art Channel. I am your host, Amanda Moss, and I'm having a delicious glass of roasted dandelion root tea. I am in the kitchen again as well today. I'm not in the studio. This is part two of the herbal tea segment. First off, I would like to read a scripture from Genesis 2, 5. And every plant of the field before it was the, in the earth, and every herb of the field before it grew, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was not a man to till the ground. Now, yesterday I talked a little bit about rose tea and their benefits. I discussed um, drying the rose petals. You can use them fresh, of course. Roses have been used for thousands of years for medicinal purposes, and all roses are edible. It's believed that rose tea is higher in phenol content and antioxidants than green tea. Also, it's rich in gallic acid. Rose tea has anti-cancer, antimicrobial, anti-inflammatory, and analogistic effects, and it's good for eye health, mental benefit, stress reduction, and antidepressant effects, reduces severity of allergic reactions. Also used in the treatment of liver disease. And of course, the roses from your floors and nurseries are not advised in your herbal teas because they have been treated. So, I have a picture over here of a wild rose right here and we could put that there in front of the camera wild roses are the most beneficial of the roses they have so many more properties than your regular roses so if you ever happen to be driving across alongside the road and find some wild roses I highly recommend those next I would like to show everyone a picture of prim rose these are pink and they are very beneficial as well they have many, many uh, medicinal properties that are very beneficial. And you can find Primrose at your herb shops if you don't happen to find any at the side of the road. Okay. Next, I just wanted to show this beautiful bouquet here of some yellow roses that I showed yesterday. I'm just going to sort of turn those around there. I picked these today fresh, and they smell beautiful. They, the smell is just invigorating. And these are some rose petals here, of course, from the Jacob's Ladder. And then, of course, everyone at home probably seen these yesterday. And 
and I couldn't quite get part with these here. These were the chamomile, and these were picked several days ago, and they're beautiful still in just a little water. Next, I would like to show a picture of passion flower. Now, this one has many, I'm sorry, uh, this one is a nature. If everyone at home can see this picture, I guess this is the seat that I purchased at Lowe's. And the passion flower, however, does look similar. There is a pink passion flower, of course. And this is echinacea, which believe to have six, ten times more benefits than a uh, golden seal. And the two together work wonderfully. Okay, let's see what else I have here. Hawthorne tea. I do not have much information on that one as well. And I said this yesterday and can't stress this enough. Whenever adding honey or lemon to your teas, I highly recommend that you never add honey to hot liquids. Let, it, let your liquids become lukewarm because honey added to hot liquids becomes toxic for the body. I can't remember if I read about Lemon balm yesterday. Perhaps I did. And I did not read about the native legend tea. Now this one is going to be your best cancer fighter. Native Legend Tea by Unicity. Native Legend Tea benefits. It prevents the buildup of excess fatty deposits in arterial walls, kidney, heart, and liver. Regulates cholesterol levels by transforming sugar and fat into energy. Destroys parasites in the digestive system and throughout the body. Counteracts the effects of aluminum, lead, and mercury poisoning. Strengthens and improves the functioning of muscles, organs, and tissues. Makes bones, joints, ligaments, lungs, and membranes strong and flexible and therefore less vulnerable to stress injuries. Nourishes and stimulates the brain and nervous system. Promotes the absorption of fluids in the tissues. Removes toxic accumulations in the fat, limb, bone marrow, bladder, and alimentary canals. Normal, neutralizes acids, absorbs toxins in the bowel, and eliminates both. Clears the respiratory channels by dissolving and expelling mucus. Relieves the liver of its burden of detoxification by converting fatty toxins into water-soluble soluble substances that can then be easily eliminated through the kidneys. Assist the liver to produce lectin, which forms part of the myelin sheath, a white fatty material that encloses nerve fibers. Reduces, perhaps, eliminates heavy metal deposits in tissues, especially those surrounding the joints, to reduce inflammation and stiffness. Improves the functions of the pancreas and spleen 
by increasing the effectiveness of insulin purifies the blood, increases red blood cell production, and keeps them from rupturing. Increases the body's ability to utilize oxygen by raising the oxygen level in the tissue cells. Maintains the balance between potassium and sodium within the body so that the fluid inside and outside each cell is regulated in this way. Cells are nourished with nutrients and are cleansed properly. Converts calcium and potassium, oxalates into a harmless form by making them solvent in the urine. Regulates the amount of oxalic acid delivered to the kidneys, thus reducing the risk of stone formation. In them, protects against toxins entering the brain protects the body against radiation and x-rays, release pain, speeds up wound healing by regenerating the damaged area, increases the production of antibodies like lymphocytes and T-cells in the thymus gland which is the defender of our immune system. <clears throat> Protects the cells against free radicals, breaks down nodules and lessens pain, inhibits benign growths, and tumors may affect metastasized cells, sorry, that's a hard one to pronounce, returning to the original tumor site. Tumors may enlarge and harden at first, then soften and discharge as pus-like material. Now, I would like to read to you the eight herbs that are in native legend tea. Milk thistle, burdock root, red clover, sheep sorrel, slippery elm bark, Turkish rhubarb root, watercress, and bladder rack. Now, that's it on the Native Legend Tea by Unicity. I highly recommend this one. This is a huge, this is going to be one of your biggest cancer fighters. So now, if we have time, I would like to bring the camera over here to some of the herbs that I have been planting. We'll move right on over here. These are some that I started some days ago, as you can see. I have my garlic chive starting to sprout. It shouldn't be too much longer before they're ready to thin out and put in the ground. And I have my thyme here. And this one really spreads out. The lavender hasn't come up yet. I have my oregano here. I have some baby sproutings, if anyone can see those. And I have some peppermint here, just some little baby sproutings. And these here I have just planted today. We have a uh, passion flower, tarragon, sage, and marjoram. 
And I just planted these today, of course. So we shouldn't see any sproutings for a few more days. These were planted the day before yesterday. This is uh, parsley, cilantro, basil, and lobella. So, these are going to be my fresh herbs that I grow. Because fresh is going to always be best for your herbal teas. And I would like to get many more herbs planted out in my herb garden. I did an herb garden years ago, of course, and I did not have as many as I have now, and there are going to be many, many more that I'm going to be adding to my herb garden. And later on, perhaps this fall, when the herbs start coming up, I would like to do a show out in the herb garden and show everyone how everything is going and give everyone some tips because different herbs require different treatment, soil, compost, some require less water, some require more. So I hope everyone has enjoyed part two of the Herbal Tea Show. And until next time, may God bless you and keep you. And until we meet again, so long.